You mustn't come to the funeral. My husband Roger shouted at me when he learned that his father had deceased after a long battle with an illness. What wife doesn't attend her father-in-law's funeral? Despite my protest, Roger firmly refused, and I didn't understand why. On the day of the funeral, I sneaked in to observe, and there he was, seated with a woman I didn't recognize at the bereaved family side. What on earth is going on? Who is that woman? I was shocked and confused, not understanding what was happening, but soon I would learn the shocking truth. I'm Catherine, 30 years old. I married Roger, a 35-year-old office worker, three years ago. We don't have any kids yet. Roger often travels for work, only coming home about three days a week. While he is away, I devote myself to my hobby of drawing comics. On his days off, we would go shopping together, watch movies, and enjoyed our time as a couple. Roger's mother passed away when he was a child, and his father raised him and his sister Sarah single-handedly. In the early days of our marriage, we would often visit Roger's family, a two-hour drive away. But when his father fell seriously ill a year ago, our visits gradually decreased. Roger told me, Dad doesn't want you to see him in his emaciated state. So I refrained from visiting. One day, a call came in on Roger's mobile after he returned from work. Oh, Dad has passed away? Upon hearing that, I stopped preparing dinner. Roger sighed deeply after hanging up. Was that real? Oh, did you hear that? Oh, his condition seems to have worsened suddenly. The one who contacted him was his uncle Terry. The events leading up to Roger's father passing happened in a flash, and Uncle Terry didn't even have time to call Roger. The funeral would be held the day after tomorrow. Roger seemed quite flustered due to the sudden news. As I was watching him with concern, I softly spoke but his response was unexpected. I'll come with you to the funeral. No, you absolutely can't come. Huh? Why? It's obvious that I should go, right? Shut up. Just listen to what I say and keep your mouth shut. Roger stormed off to his room, hastily packing his suit and change of clothes. But why? Can you tell me why? Shut up. I'm going to stay at my parents' house until the funeral is over. Just remember, you must not come to the funeral. Wait, hold on a minute. Ignoring my panic, my husband Roger left the house. It's only natural for a wife to attend her father-in-law's funeral. Then why isn't it okay for me to go? I was left feeling frustrated and confused. Unable to let it go, I decided to ask about the location of my father-in-law's funeral. I called my sister-in-law Sarah who I don't usually keep in touch with, but she seems oddly distant. How come you know about our father's death, Catherine? I heard it from Roger. Hmm, it's surprising that he has contacted you already. Sarah seems really puzzled, and for some reason, our conversation wasn't aligning well, but I had no time to worry about that. Roger told me not to come, but I really want to attend the funeral. I appreciate your sentiment, Catherine, but it might be best for you not to come. Why? My father-in-law passed away, right? I want to say my final goodbye, please. After my persistent pleading, there was a moment of silence before she responded. All right, but keep this a secret from Roger, okay? Sarah gave me the location and time of the funeral, but she said, please arrive later than the start time and take a seat where you won't be noticed. I couldn't quite understand why I was being treated this way, but I was able to take bereavement leave from work and decided to go to the funeral. On the day of my father-in-law's funeral, as instructed by Sarah, I arrived a bit late at the funeral venue, and to my surprise, there was an unfamiliar woman sitting next to my husband, Roger, in the seat of the chief mourner. Who is she? Why is she sitting next to my husband? In a state of confusion and not knowing what was going on, I quietly took a seat in the farthest row back. Then, I overheard the people in the seat in front whispering, Is that woman Roger's new wife, Lucy? Poor Roger. 
His previous wife apparently handed him divorce papers and just left. I could hear voices whispering. Not only that, I could hear whispers from other attendees speculating about me having an affair or being in debt. The shock was so great that I lost all strength and my heart began to race. I never filed for divorce, and we've never even discussed separation. And what does this remarriage mean? I couldn't catch up with the situation, but from the rumors, I understood that the woman sitting next to my husband was his new wife. She looked to be in her early 20s, and she occasionally caressed her belly, which was visibly swollen even under her loose funeral attire. When it was my turn to pay my respects, I stood up and the previously quiet venue started to buzz. She really had the nerve to show up? What an insensitive woman! I heard as I slowly approached the row where my husband was seated. When my husband Robert caught my eye, his face turned ashen and he looked visibly shaken, but his new wife seemed oblivious to his distress. Having finished paying my respects at the funeral, I swiftly left the funeral home to head to the city hall, escaping his piercing gaze. There, I took out my copy of the family register, where it was written deregistration, indicating that our divorce had taken place five months ago. With my hands trembling in fury, my mind went blank. How could he dare to secretly file for divorce and remarry? I will never forgive this. I gritted my teeth, resolved to take revenge on my husband. Even after a few days, Robert never returned home, nor was there any communication from him. Didn't he say he would stay at his parents' house until the funeral was over? I was filled with a desire to confront him, but I chose not to contact him, waiting to see what his next move would be. Why on earth would he secretly file for divorce and remarry, all while living with me and keeping it a secret? There must be something else going on here. As I thought back on Roger's past actions one by one, I noticed something and quickly switched on my computer. I remembered seeing him typing away at a blog on his computer in the middle of the night. Going through his history, I discovered a blog titled, Roger the Dragon King's Wild Diary. There were no pictures of Roger's face, but there were pictures of his car and our home, so I knew without a doubt that it was his. As I read each article he had posted, the details of what he had been planning were written out, and my body heated up with surging anger. Ah, that's it! With a brilliant scheme in mind to get back at Roger, I called my sister-in-law Sarah and another individual. Preparing meticulously, I couldn't help but look forward to seeing the expression on Roger's face. On the day of the operation, I was standing in front of the house Roger shared with his new wife, Lucy. After a while, a delivery truck pulled up and the delivery man began unloading packages. Lucy came out of the house and began exclaiming at the entrance, What the hell is this? Whose packages are these? Hey, darling! Huh? What's going on? Called by Lucy, Robert emerged, his eyes bulging as he looked at the multitude of cardboard boxes that had been delivered. Who's it from? As he leaned in to see the sender's name, he abruptly began acting suspiciously, spreading his arms to hide the packages. Well, of course he would. After all, with the sender labeled as ex-wife Hart, there was no way he could keep his cool. Seeing this, Lucy raised her voice. Ex-wife? What do you mean by that? I've heard nothing about this. Robert didn't respond to her, but quickly paid the delivery fee of $200. And when he did, he locked eyes with me, hiding in the shadows of a nearby lamppost. Hey, you! What are you doing here? I got your address from your sister, Sarah. I turned to Lucy, who was watching our exchange with a puzzled look, and gave her a warm smile. Nice to meet you, Lucy. I'm Catherine, the ex-wife of Roger who sent you these packages. Sorry to surprise you. He unilaterally filed for divorce five months ago without telling me. When I showed her our marriage certificate, she seemed a bit taken aback, but then she invited me in, saying, We shouldn't cause a scene outside. Once inside the living room, I ignored my trembling husband sitting next to Lucy and began to speak. Lucy, when did you start dating Roger? 
About a year ago, he said he was single. I can't believe it. Interesting. So he deceives both you and me. Come on, don't say such horrible things. Ha <laughs> ha. It's just a simple misunderstanding, isn't it? I was speechless at my husband's nonchalant laughter and his utter lack of remorse. It's unacceptable that you filed for divorce without my consent. I'm suing you for $30,000 in alimony. You've been cheating, so it's only fair, right? What? Why should I have to pay that? While my husband was fuming with anger, Lucy, on the other hand, seems quite calm. Well, don't be so stingy. Just pay her, darling. After all, you're the boss, so $30,000 shouldn't be a big deal, right? At hearing that, I couldn't help but burst out laughing. Lucy looked at me, puzzled by my reaction. Who's the boss? Roger's been lying about that too? Lucy, he's just an ordinary office worker. What? Roger, what's going on? As Lucy confronted him, my husband, beads of sweat appearing on his forehead, began to make excuses. Lucy, I'm sorry for lying, but when my father died, I came into a large sum of money. His stupidity left me with nothing to do but laugh bitterly. From his blog, which I had found, it was clear that he was under the delusion that he would inherit a fortune if his seriously ill father passed away. He had lied about his identity to his mistress, got her pregnant without showing any signs of panic, and joyfully documented his plan to divorce me unilaterally. When I slapped the printed pages of his blog onto the table, the doorbell rang. My husband opened the door, and there stood Terry, his uncle. There's no way you'd inherit anything, you idiot! In fact, besides Sarah, Terry was the other person I had contacted. Before entering this house, I had called Terry on my cell phone and had him listen to our entire conversation. You explained to our family that Catherine left you after having an affair and filing for divorce, didn't you? Uh, that is... that... Roger seemed unable to come up with an excuse and started to get defensive. Just because of that, it doesn't mean I can't inherit my father's estate. I am his son, after all. You've been disinherited. That's got nothing to do with the estate. Huh? What are you talking about? From what I heard from Terry, Roger was always pestering my in-laws for money. When my father-in-law rejected him, Roger would insult him and sometimes even resort to physical abuse. Recognizing his life was nearing its end, my father-in-law had taken the initiative to disinherit Roger. Hold on a minute. So you're saying I'm not getting a single cent? I've got debts because I was counting on my father's inheritance. What am I supposed to do? That's what you deserve, was all I could say. Your father wanted you to become a responsible person. That's why he thought it would be better not to give you any money. Don't you understand his feelings? So give me the inheritance and I'll become more responsible. The more Roger spoke, the more I was filled with disgust. And it seems Lucy, his mistress, felt the same. You told me you were a CEO. That's why I went with you. I got no use for a poor man. Lucy, please, don't say that. Her baby's about to be born. With that, she let out a big sigh and shot a glare at him. I'll give birth and raise this child by myself. All I need from you is alimony and child support. Lucy, please forgive me. Roger began to sob but I wasn't about to let him off the hook. You'll also have to pay me alimony. That's impossible. I don't have that kind of money. Oh, I got it. Catherine, let's give it another go. What? You had the audacity to file for divorce, and now you're asking to remarry? Please, I'm begging you. You can work too. We can repay the debt together. Are you kidding me? Furious at Roger's selfishness, I yelled back shaking him off my leg and leaving the house with Terry. Soon after, my ex-husband was served with divorce papers from Lucy, who was demanding $20,000 in alimony and $500 a month in child support, according to my sister-in-law, Sarah. In addition to the $30,000 in alimony that I had demanded, my ex-husband was swamped with a debt from the mortgage on the house he lived in with Lucy and was reportedly working like a horse from dawn till dusk. 
Meanwhile, I was enjoying a carefree single life. Sarah, who used to be my sister-in-law, and I have become great friends, and when she comes over to stay, we have a great time chatting. To top it off, a comic strip I drew based on my ex-husband's blog post has received a phenomenal response on social media, and I'm going to publish it. Excitedly contemplating the title for the comic, I'm enjoying my new daily life.